We're on lesson 3 of chapter 8, which is special products of polynomials. First we're going to square a binomial, then we're going to use the sum and difference pattern and mental math, then we're going to solve a real world problem. One of the special products that we'll be looking at today is squaring a polynomial. If it tells us that a square has a side length of a plus b, and it asks us to find the area in terms of a and b, we actually could do that. Remember to find the area of a square, we multiply the length times the width, and since those are the same, it's essentially squaring it. So we would do a plus b squared. If we use the table method like we used last time, we would see that a times a is a squared. We have a times b is a b, a times this b is a b, and then b times b is b squared. So what we end up with, if you add it all together, we'd have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So let's do that a few more times here, square this binomial. We have 3x plus 4 squared. So if I'd write this out, it'd be 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. If I use the FOIL system, we'd have the front, the outside, the inside, and then the back. Front would be 3x times 3x, that would give me 9x squared. The outside would be 3x times 4, that would be plus 12x. The inside would be 4 times 3x, which would be another plus 12x. Then we have 4 times 4, which is plus 16. So after I do my simplification, which would add these two together, I would now have 9x squared plus 24x plus 16. Let's do the same over here. We have 5x minus 2y, so we have 5x minus 2y times 5x minus 2y. We can use the FOIL system, front, outside, inside, and last. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 5x times negative 2y be negative 10xy negative 2y times positive 5x would also be negative 10xy. And then the last numbers, negative 2y times negative 2y, that creates positive 4y squared. So now if I simplify these, I would have this negative 10xy with this negative 10xy. That gives me negative 20xy. So my answer would be 25x squared minus 20xy plus 4y squared. Now we're going to focus a little bit on the sum and difference pattern. And here's the idea of that. Whenever you have the same variable like x here, and you're multiplying a sum and a difference of the same number, something happens here. You get your x squared from multiplying the x's. When you multiply x times negative 2, that gives you negative 2x. When you multiply 2 times x, that gives you positive 2x. I'm going to have these highlighted because they're going to be doing what? Well, they're going to cancel each other out. So I have this negative 4 from 2 times negative 2, and that's all I'm left with, x squared minus 4. Whenever you have a sum and difference with the same number, you can pretty much cut out these middle numbers because they're going to be getting crossed off. So you usually have the square, and then you have the one without the variable. So the square is always going to be positive because the x's are positive, and then the number without the variable is always going to be negative because you're always going to have one negative and one positive. So if you look at this one, we have t plus 5 and t minus 5. So I can take a look at our t squared. The negative 5t and the positive 5t are going to cross each other out. So I'm left with minus 25 from the negative 25 multiplication. Solving this one, 3x plus y, 3x minus y. So I have 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared. The uh, negative 3xy from this multiplication is going to cancel out with the positive 3xy from that multiplication. So then I'm left with negative y times positive y, which is minus y. We can also do this with numbers without variables, too. We have 26 times 34. It tells us to use special products to find the products of 26 times 34. Well, if you notice, 26 and 34 are the same distance away from 30. They're both 4 away. So if I solved it like this, I could have 30 plus 4 times 30 minus 4. And you actually can solve it pretty quickly. We have 30 times 30, which is 900. The 30 times negative 4 is going to cancel out with the 30 times the positive 4. So positive 4 times negative 4 is negative 16, or minus 16. 
900 minus 16 is 884. And then that would be my answer. So that sum and difference pattern saves you a lot of time. If you really get stuck, you can solve it this way and do the crossing out. Uh, but eventually you're going to start doing this in your head and doing it pretty quickly. Let's solve a real world problem then. It says the color of dark patches on a border collie's coat is determined by a combination of two genes, B and R. An offspring inherits one patch color gene from each parent. Each parent has two color genes and the offspring has an equal chance of inheriting either one. The gene B here is for black patches and the gene R is for red patches. Any gene combination with a capital B results in black patches. So suppose that each parent has the same combination B R. The Punnett square shows the possible gene combinations of the offspring and the resulting patch color. So for example with this Punnett square we have this dog giving away a capital B and a small r, 50% chance either way. We have this dog giving away a capital B and small r, also a 50% chance. So if this one gives a capital B and this one gives a capital B, this will have black patches. If this one gives a capital B and this one gives an r, it would still have black patches because this is dominant. If this one gives an r and that one gives a capital B, it would still be black patches because that's dominant. If they both give their R, this would be red patches because there is no black patch gene. So what percent would that be of black patches? That would be 75 percent. Three out of four would have black patches. Now it asks us to show how you could use a polynomial to model the possible gene combinations in the offspring. Well you notice here that both parents have the same gene combinations which tells me that we can do this as a square polynomial. So if I did one parent here, that would be a 50% chance of having a black gene, so 0.5 times B, plus the 50% chance of having a red gene, so 0.5R. And since the parents are exactly the same, when I multiply it, I could square it. So if I would rewrite this, I would have 0.5B plus 0.5R times 0.5B plus 0.5R. We do the FOIL method, front, outside, inside, and last. I'll write my answer down here. 0.5b times 0.5b, the front one is 0.25b squared. The outside is 0.5b times 0.5r, that would be plus 0.25br. Then we have the inside is 0.5R times 0.5B, that's plus 0.25BR again. Then we have the last one, 0.5R times 0.5R, that's plus 0.25R squared. If I would simplify this then, I have 0.25BR plus 0.25BR, that would be 0.5BR. So if I rewrite my polynomial, I have 0.25B squared plus 0.5br plus 0.25r squared. Since these numbers could be percentages, it would be a 25% chance of having both black genes, b squared, b times b. It would be a 50% chance of having a black and a red. And it would have a 25% chance of only having red genes. So this fits with our model over here from the Punnett square.